Well, let's uh, go through what Wade Keller wrote. There were two main reasons for the turn occurring earlier rather than later. One, WWE's creative staff and mainly Vince McMahon and Hunter didn't feel it would be possible to stave off the growing fan support of Orton. He had been cheered against Edge even before Edge showed any heel tendencies. Orton received cheers virtually everywhere he went, no matter who he was wrestling. Management felt it was more productive to encourage the fans to cheer rather than drag it out for months to the point where the turn would have been anticlimactic. Not everyone agreed with that strategy, but the rationale was grounded in crowd reaction already. The second reason for the turn is everyone realizes business is down and most upturns in business coincide with a fresh top baby face catching on with Orton showing signs of potential to catch fire. They felt the timing to roll the dice with a quick baby face turn was right. Ratings were down heading into SummerSlam, and with Monday Night Football starting in September, they felt the timing was right to establish Orton as the babyface to build the Raw brand. As much as everyone is a fan of Chris Benoit's strengths, there was a consensus that he didn't have the range on interviews and overall look to be the quote next big thing. Orton, everyone agrees, has that potential. What say you? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, Wade's giving you his opinion, and it's an educated opinion, and of which I respect. But uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't agree that uh, the, the. It's obvious the promo stuff was uh, an issue, but it's an issue if you cast him and put him in the same kettle of fish that you put other talkers who can talk better. So why would you cast him? in that role. Why would you play a person out of position? If you knew they, you know, like Conrad, me and you're playing football these days. I promise you, we're not going to be running backs. We're not going to be wide outs. The only thing that's going to be wide on us is our ass playing in the offensive line. That's what's going to happen. That's where we'd be in position there, but this is a, that was just putting him out of position. So I I think that's a cop out. I'm not knocking Keller. He's he's giving us an opinion and he may be right in that regard. I'm I'm not so sure he isn't, but to me, it's a cop out. Benoit wasn't a WWE creation. Uh, Benoit was not brought in by Vince or Hunter It was brought in by me. Uh, and, uh, with all the other radicals and I was, it's one of my proudest hirings, but not not a damn one of them were six feet tall. And that always was always is. And no matter what anybody says, the size and WWE is always going to be an issue. Until they run with somebody big time at the top that has a little bit that is not size uh, centric, uh, I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. So uh, you know, hey, Seth Rollins is not a big guy, but he's bigger than Benoit. He's taller, and that's kind of the deal, you know. He, he, so, uh, and I'm glad that they're using Seth Rollins on top because he's not a he's not a giant, and maybe they'll give other guys a chance to do some better. And it also helps the the uh, roster get better because it doesn't shut anybody out. That might have a chance to work on top of the card. The other thing you said earlier about the fra- uh, factions factions are designed as a rule to spin somebody out to spin out. It's like a, it's like a sitcom with a, with an ensemble cast. You hope that somebody on that cast takes off and that they become uh, a star that can, can shine alone. The booking theory that I learned in, in the seventies, I use it all the way through the attitude there and everywhere else. If you can get your car to be very strong, uh, uh, vertically and not just horizontally, horizontal would mean this folks. If I'm booking a card and I, and, and horizontal booking would be like a, a tag match, multiple people in a match. That's horizontal booking in my, my world, uh, eight man, six mans, whatever, multiple person matches, uh, that's a, that's a different ball game than going one-on-one and single stars have for years since, and maybe only, only a few times since in since the fifties and sixties have tag teams really got at the top of the card and stayed there. So most bookers like the booking, the single matches, creating single stars. And, uh, and so you work, you're booking then on a, a horizontal basis where you got a single match, single match, single match. And even the old days, uh, Watts talked to me about booking. We, I, I never booked a card on purpose anyway, that had back to back tag matches on it. That was a, that was a no, no in wrestling, give the variety and tag matches are special. And you hope the teams got over. And the only way teams get all going to get over is they have, you gotta have two good teams. 
and they got to mean something. They can't have 50-50 booking. We see that a lot. But nonetheless, uh, that was a situation about the factions. The ev uh, evolution was designed to get o Orton and Batista over and, and spin them out of the group so they would be able to stand on their own as single stars in WWE. And uh, quite frankly, at the end of the day, pretty much that was kind of what happened at, at, the, at the end. Both Orton and Batista left, and they became bigger stars. Batista, especially when he, he saved my fat ass uh, for getting beat to a bloody pulp in uh, the garden uh, when uh, he helped me beat Triple H. Sell out crowd, folks. Yeah, we don't last. Yeah, big time. But uh, kidding. That was a part of his getting over uh, one, one step. So that was the whole deal. This The evolution was built. Rick, hey, look, Rick and Hunter are over. They didn't need rubs and pushes and shit. They, they were over, but, uh, the two young, younger guys, uh, were not. And that's why that, that thing was put together. And, but again, the application of how you exercise someone from those groups is always up for debate. It's always subjective. What's not subjective is business is down. Uh, the numbers are coming out leading into this pay-per-view where we're showing that while revenue may be up. That's a little deceiving because you're running more pay-per-views here and more house shows than you were the prior year. Revenue is at 81.6 million, which is up from 74.7 million. And of that 6.9 million increase, 3.9 of that is the result of two additional pay-per-views and specifically buys are down on those shows from say 77,000 buys down. Another one is, um, uh, 50,000 down. So the shows, when they're looking head to head year over year, you're getting significant losses there, but you're running two more. So that makes up the number House show attendance, similar story there. You're running 89 shows in this quarter compared to 84, at the same time, the prior year, but instead of 5,200 on average, you're down to 4,400, but that, you know, difference doesn't make up. You're still going to see a loss there. When you see that drastic of a drop ratings also down a little bit, not a ton. But it does tell the story that things are trending down. Do you remember, you know, with, with Benoit and Guerrero at the helm, Vince feeling like, ah, oh, we've made a mistake because I mean, I know you said earlier, why would you pull it off of Benoit fans seem to like him? It does seem like there's less people going to the house shows. There's less people watching raw. There's less people buying the pay-per-views. Maybe it is time to make a change. Yeah. Our, our time to do better creative. Maybe it's time to do better booking Conrad. Uh, you know, uh, to, to say or infer for anyone to infer that this is a Benoit, uh, thing that, well, it didn't work. And he's, a, he's the reason the houses are down. I don't, I don't, I just don't buy into that. Uh, he was not booked like a champion. Uh, he, he performed like a champion, but it just, uh, it was, it was a failure of the, uh, of those cats that whose balls would fit into a thimble. Thimble balls, where's our shirts? Thimble balls, uh, are, uh, they, they could have thought a little harder, but if they saw an inkling that Vince was leaning away toward Chris, the last thing most of those little insecure bastards are going to do is to challenge that. Oh, the boss don't want to go there. So let's, I ain't, I'm not going there. Uh, oh, not me, buddy. Ain't going to be me. This was ass shoot out. Uh, so, uh, that's how I looked at that thing. I, I just think it was a premature taking a belt off Benoit. It's my opinion. I and mean, it's not, it has anything to do with Randy being a good champion or Hunter being a good champion or, or whatever, nothing. It's just, there was no reason for it. And Benoit did not get established as a main event guy. Look, when Benoit came out of WCW and we hired those cats, it wasn't like they were being used on top of the card. They were, they were being used to take a lot of bumps, do a lot, do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, spot monkey type things as somebody might say. And, uh, it, it was just, uh, you know, uh, a thing where he didn't get a chance to get completely over as a main event guy as the champ. So, uh, I, I, the whole thing was, was, uh, fumbled, bumbled and stumbled uh, on that booking and it affected everybody in that regard. So the, but the bottom line of why weren't we drawing is real simple. We were not giving the fans from top to bottom, what they wanted to see simple, simple. 
And so then the question is that you or me or anybody else listening does, they do not have an answer for. So what could we have done differently? Well, we could have tried a lot of different things, but there's still no guarantee that what we're trying is going to quote unquote, get over. So bottom line, we weren't providing the product that the fans wanted to see the matchups. There were great matchups. The fans wanted to see that we did not give them. Well, what the office wants to see is the wrestlers start dressing up at the end of August. Keller would report that seven wrestlers were fined for violating the dress code, including Devon Dudley and Ray Mysterio. The way the fines work are it's $500 for the first offense, a thousand dollars for the second offense. And unbelievably you're suspended for a third offense and management's perspective is clear. According to Wade, it's not asking too much to ask the wrestlers representing the company to dress nicely. Some wrestlers were showing up in Rena's and Gold's gym t-shirts and Zubaz pants. And that's what made management make the change. Yeah. yeah. yeah it looked like a pro pro. That's all it looked successful. There's a method to the madness here. I fully endorse the dress code thing. And, and the reason, and I, and look, who do you think these guys came to to bitch? You think they went to Vince's office and to bitch about not being aware of their Zubaz? No, they came to me. The issue is really simple, man. You, you, if you look, if you dress for success, if you look successful, it helps what you, it helps your skill. It helps your job. It helps your vocation. It's just, to me, it's just a real simple deal. And the, all these guys are making some great money. Take that wonderful resume you've accomplished and you've created and, and go to another walk of life to try to get the same cash. Good luck. Ain't going to happen. So embrace your job, no matter what it is. Take pride in your job, and that includes just dressing like a pro. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.